I've got the lights off in here because I wanted to show you guys something really, really cool about this 3D printer. Check this sucker out. It glows like Tron and the 14 year old in me has never been happier. This thing is so cool. Let's get these lights back on in here. So this is the X Maker from AOC, not the X Maker from those other guys. Names are confusing. And this 3D printer, I'm just gonna say it right now. It is so good. It has split the vote on what 3D printer I recommend to people. It is that impressive. Hey everybody, it's Joe the 3D Printing Professor, and if you're new to 3D printing or just want something new to do with 3D printing, you're in the right place. Doesn't that feel good? And if you want to take it another level, I have a Discord that's super easy to find. Just go to discord.3dpprofessor.com, sign up, and join a group of amazing people who are doing amazing things with 3D printing and helping each other do amazing things. I hope to see you there. So before going on, I want to thank everybody who provided the stuff that you're going to see in this video. I want to thank, of course, AOC for sending the 3D printer. And I want to thank Tech Sonar for sending me a roll of this beautiful tri-extrusion filament. It's red, green, and blue in different parts. So as your print turns around, it'll look different from different angles. And that's really, it's a neat effect, and I do enjoy that. So thank you, Tech Sonar, for the filament. And I also want to thank my friends at Link Plus who has sent me this Android tablet for using with this 3D printer. Yes, this 3D printer has an app on Android that you can load up and send prints to it, very similar to other apps that we've seen. Now, this particular app, though, requires the size of a tablet. If you have just a phone, it won't work as well. So I really appreciate Link Plus, who sent me this Android tablet that I'm going to be using with this 3D printer. And I can confirm that it works great. Once I dug in and started using the X Maker, it immediately merited comparisons to the Adventurer 3 for me, which if you don't know, is a very good thing. The Adventurer 3 is my number one recommended 3D printer. If you want a 3D printer that's relatively cheap but doesn't require a lot of fiddling to get up and running, you want an Adventure 3. If you want a 3D printer that's super easy to use and super easy to maintain, you want an Adventure 3. If you are an individual that looks at the headache of running a Ender 3, then you want an Adventurer 3. If you are a school or makerspace that is going to be putting a 3D printer in front of people, you definitely want an Adventurer 3. And so my comparison of this to an Adventurer 3 is a very, very good thing. And in some ways, this is better than an Adventurer 3. I know, I know, those words coming out of my mouth, honestly, high praise. Like an Adventurer 3, you don't have to assemble this printer. Pull it out of the box, print with it, it's good to go. Unlike an Adventurer 3, this has a lot of test prints on it that are toys, fun toys, cool toys, just so many fun little toys that you can start printing and using before you even load up the software. It's amazing. It's got this cool little rocket model that prints all in one piece, despite the fact that it's actually several different pieces that come apart and that you can reassemble in different ways. I don't know why you'd want to reassemble them in different ways, but you can. Also, the top is a separate piece that rotates. It doesn't come out. I, I don't know what that's about, but you know what? It's a fun toy that they made unique. They didn't take this from anywhere. This is, it's branded, it's got their own stuff. They are making an original library of 3D print models. It's got these fun little balloon racer cars. Those are cool. And this articulated robot 
thing. I don't know what it is, but it's cool. And a spaceship egg holder. I. It's cool. Good enough. Even before you load the software, you've got a lot of fun toys to play with coming out of this machine, and they give you a quarter spool of filament to play with it. Which, actually, this is a good time to talk about how you load filament into this machine. Now, the Adventure 3s had a problem in that they recessed their filament holder into the body of the 3D printer, but they didn't leave enough room for a full-size spool. This one solves that problem by moving the filament holder to the outside, which is very cool, but where do you load the filament? Well, you have to take off this little panel that's held on by magnets, and then you have access to the filament loading mechanism. And after you're done loading the filament, you just put this little panel back. And uh, can I just say, this panel is gonna be the first thing to disappear off of this 3D printer. I just know it. It doesn't serve any functional purpose. It just makes your panel look smooth after you've loaded the filament, but you've gotta take it off every time you load the filament and put it back on. And I'm just gonna stop putting it on after a while, I know. And, and I hate it because they put magnets on here. It's, it's a perfect made piece. It's, it just hurts me to know that this panel it's not going to stick around for very long, but you don't really need it because, yeah, you'll just have access to the side of your, your filament loader and we'll call that good. And then there's the software for this 3D printer. There are, in fact, two pieces of software for this 3D printer. A regular slicer that you can use to slice 3D models, just like you're used to if you've already done 3D printing, and an app with a library of original toys that they have made and designed for printing on this 3D printer. They haven't scraped Thingiverse, they've actually put the time and effort to make their own library of 3D print files. Some of which, quite frankly, I envy outside of this app. I, I like look at this and go, man, everybody should have access to these files. They're so cool. And all you have to do is look through the list and go, ooh, that, that robot toy looks really cool. And it pulls it up and it lines it all up. And when you hit print, it plates it for you in as many different plates as they need for this one. You hit go and the prints start running on your 3D printer. So it's super cool and super easy to use. This, this is what I was talking about, guys. This is a killer app for 3D printing. And you don't necessarily need to have an Android tablet for this one. They do have a regular version that runs in Windows as well. So you could just run this from your computer just like you normally would. So it's super easy, super accessible. But if you have a tablet computer like mine here from Link Plus, then you have the option of having a dedicated, I don't know, I suppose, screen for this machine that you could just put next to it and let the kids use anytime that they want. So this 3D printer definitely has a laser focus on young children. And using a 3D printer with a laser focus for young children in my house for a long time in the form of the toy box, it's exciting to see other people entering that space and doing it so well. But this 3D printer isn't just for kids. It's got a regular slicer. It's a regular 3D printer. In fact, you could just as well not use the app, use their slicer, and just use this like you would any other 3D printer. So I would say that the age range for this is everybody. Now, looking at their app, I wanted to be sure that they had done, you know, a complete job and made sure that all of the prints that they had were properly supported, since that's something I had seen in previous apps that they forgot to do. So I found this print, a raccoon that pops up out of a trash can, and it very obviously would need support. So I printed it out, and on the app, it doesn't show that it needs support, and it doesn't give you a print preview, but the print itself, yeah, is just covered in supports. And these supports are not super difficult to remove. Overall, I'm, I'm kind of impressed with 
how well they've set this up. So yes, their app, full marks. It does everything. All their prints actually work. Great, great job, guys. Now, I mentioned at the beginning that this, compared to the Adventure 3, might split my vote a little bit, and here's why. The one thing that they've done on this 3D printer that's, in my opinion, maybe not as good as the Adventure 3 was they changed the hot end configuration. On the Adventure 3, the hot end is super easy to maintain. If you need to change a nozzle, it's just push two buttons, pop out the nozzle, pop in a new one. And when you get to the point that the entire hot end breaks down, there's a plastic piece in there that does fall apart. Well, it's two screws, pop it off, pop the new one in. On this 3D printer, it no longer has the nozzle that you can pop out and pop in. It's got a traditional nozzle. So I imagine if you ever needed to change this nozzle, you could do it. You just have to, you know, get two hands and three tools and put, pop out the old nozzle and pop in a new one. Same as we do for every other 3D printer that's out there. But they do sell replacement heads and they seem fairly easy to do. But changing the entire head when you've got a clogged nozzle or something like that, that's, that seems like a bit much. That said, that's not something that you're going to do very often, and it's not something that you're going to do right away. You're probably going to print with this 3D printer for months before that even becomes an issue. So if you've only got one of these because you're an individual, that's fine. That works great, and there's nothing to complain about. But if you had a lot of these because you're a library or a makerspace and you wanted to put these in the hands of the public, that could become extremely cumbersome and tiresome after a while. So maybe that's where the split happens. So here's what I'm going to say in the future. If you are a library or a school or a makerspace that has staff that might not want to fuss with the more difficult to use 3D printers, then you absolutely want an Adventure 3. But if you're an individual, a parent whose kid wants to get into 3D printing and you've heard how difficult some of these 3D printers are to use and you want something that's easy to use, then the Maker X with its amazing app, with its easy to use interface and with its relatively easy maintenance is the number one choice for that group. So there you go, the AO Seed. Impressive from its initial glowy presentation to just every experience along the way. An absolute joy to recommend to people. Well, that's it for this video. I wanna thank you very much for watching and remind you that you are a child of God, so you're special to me. So take care of yourself, and if you can, someone else too. I want more of that glowiness. Ah, so much fun. <laughs>